It's been really, it's been a really hard week for me. Honestly, I don't know if it's the stress from work or what. Honestly, at this point, I can't tell anymore because I think I've survived worse than whatever I'm doing right now. It's really busy. I mean, I spent Christmas pretty much working. Even though I was on leave, I was just at home working on these packages that may or may not get approved. Sometimes work can be nice because it makes you... I don't know, it gives you something to revolve your life around sometimes. But as I've said before, I think every fiber in my being is fundamentally opposed to the idea of working. So even if it's simple, even if all the tasks that I've been assigned are simple, and part of me will always find the thought of completing them painful. And so the experience of going through it will always be painful on some level. But mostly it's just been a really difficult week. Because I think, I don't know if it's like my hormones being all out of whack or something. Or just, it's just one of those blue moods, you know, and everything feels awful and I just want to stay in bed all day and catch NCT on my iPhone screen <laughs> and I don't even want to write I mean I'm kind of writing all the time but what I mean it's like serious writing I don't even want to do that anymore well that kind of used to be like I resolved it. <laughs> Is that how you say it? <laughs> Pretty sure I tried to say it in another video log entry and I just I told myself then then that I would find out what was the right way to pronounce it, but I never did. So no, it's like raison d'etre or like raison d'etre. Like I really don't know how to say it. <laughs> I don't want my eyes to get puffy tomorrow, so I'm gonna force myself to stop crying as soon as I can. If I cry for any longer than, I don't know, 10 minutes, five minutes actually, my eyes tend to get all disgusting the next day. The eyelids get so puffy and thick. And it looks like I got, I look like I just got out of a plastic surgeon's office or something. Actually, the older I get, the more I think my eyelids look fake. I'm just thinking about how I didn't expect to spend my mid-twenties like this, cooped up at home, cooped up in this city where you know, everybody's in a mask. <laughs> I mean, sorry, has to wear a mask. Sorry, I'm just not thinking straight. And they can't go anywhere at all. They just have to be stuck here. Eating the same food, going to the same places. Talking about the same things. I mean, conversation can be different, you know. But, I mean, like, we could be discussing different TV shows, different books, different ideas, but what I'm trying to say is, well, nobody's going to be talking about, nobody average, at least, will be talking about a vacation for some time now. Interesting cultural observations about societies beyond Singapore. We're not going to get too much of that for now. Really, I just thought I would hang on 
this job because I wanted the money so that I could spend it on plane tickets and budget hotels in Japan and try to just explore every corner of that country and somehow pick up the language along the way so that I could go to the less touristy stuff and and not have so much social anxiety about communicating with the people there. But right now that just feels like a dream. It's almost hard to believe that last year, around this time exactly, I was in Tokyo all by myself. And I think I went there because I was stressed about being told that I would be project manager of this project. <laughs> And so I impulsively booked a plane ticket to Tokyo for a week just because I believe in... It's not that I believe in it. I believe you should work first and then play later. But somehow I, I never... I'm never able to practice such um, priorities. I always end up playing first and then working later. And so I booked these trips just to, you know, get me through, get me through work, and, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, so, I booked one more in April, but that was cancelled because of COVID, and then I booked another one with my friends in August, but that was also cancelled, this was supposed to be the year that I would go to Europe for the first time, like actually go to a country with white people I've never been to, even Australia I've never been. But also really all I just want to do right now is explore Korea and Japan. I have to say that even though I'm not, I'm not very curious about Europe, for some reason I, something about the land doesn't really connect. But I will say I am attracted to the idea of America and also Canada, but more so America than Canada. Canada does sound a bit boring, to be honest, to be perfectly honest. And maybe South America and also, I don't know, Africa. Europe is more like a holiday destination, but I am also sure that it would be so artistic, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it would be, um, and I think I would love London, I think I would, generally the vibe I get is that countries in the west are more chill than East Asian ones, I think Singapore is pretty East Asian because of the Chinese majority, but of course, um, we're not with Southeast Asian, geographically, and for good reason as well, because our culture is a pretty good mix of all cultural attitudes, of our three, four, or so main races. I sound like a textbook, but that's what I've been taught to say since I was a kid until now, through all our social studies textbooks. Honestly, I don't even know why I feel so down. I think actually I do know, I just, I kind of always know as I've said before, but God, do I want to talk about it? No, <laughs> because it sounds so ridiculous. And I think if I were to talk about it, people would start noticing it as well. So obviously it's appearance related once again. I mean, what's new? This is gonna be the source of all my misery in life. The fact that I only have one body that I can call my own and it's gonna be this one. But at the same time, I don't know, I just feel like... <sighs> this is a strange kind of depression, you know? It's so weird. I feel like more than ever, I will find means to put a clean end to my life. And yet at the same time, I don't feel like this is a cry for help anymore. When I was younger, I think a lot of it was kind of a cry for hope. 
because I kept thinking there was hope that things could get better. I just thought maybe I didn't want to have to do it on my own. And I wanted other people to rescue me in that sense. That's horrible, actually. I've got this very bad habit of... Or rather this bad um, need to be rescued. Only I don't really express it. And so it's, it's like, it's... I'm not even... I'm not even forward about it. So it's... I don't know, it's something that probably... I don't know, it's just so pathetic. <laughs> Like, I need help, but I don't want to help myself. Maybe I don't know how to as well. Maybe because I don't think it will amount to anything in the end. No, maybe it's just a workload. <laughs> maybe I'm just crying because I don't have time to do the things that I want to do. For example, I want to spend my leave actually reading, but I didn't really get around to that. I read a few stories from House of Nuns, Flowers of Mold, but not much. Like, it was just three stories, and they were fairly well written. I feel like I can't discuss things well anymore. Not that I ever quit, but I think I was a bit better in university. My brain's always, my mind's always fuzzy and foggy. I can't remember things well. Honestly, at this point, I don't know anymore. Maybe that's what it meant to be like. So, like, when I was younger and I was always crying all the time and suicidal, like, strongly suicidal, like, I would feel like I could just jump off a building any time. Right now, I feel a lot less... I'm still impulsive about these things, but not as bad as I was before. And I guess the weight of those emotions, or rather that that intense sort of self-loathing that I really had as a younger person, I don't really have too much of that as an adult. It's more like just stagnation and... I used to read in these, um, <laughs> as a WebMD articles, or PsychMed articles, something like that, all these sites where they talk about the symptoms of depression and what that would look like in a person. A lot of it was a loss of uh, interest in things. Back then I didn't really understand, I still felt like there were so many books I wanted to read and so many stories that I want to write and tell the world. Now I don't have any of that, you know. I don't even think... I still get some anxiety thinking about all the books that I can't get to read in this lifetime. But in all honesty, I'm okay with it now. I wasn't okay with it when I was younger. I thought I would be able to, at some point at least, touch every book that was ever published in the world. Even if I couldn't get to read them. But now it's more like... I'm just not very interested in... In books anymore. I still read because... Because I'm searching. 
for something that I'm searching for people who write about loneliness and ennui and restlessness and exhaustion and labor and suicide and beauty like I have all these topics that I want to read about and so I read because I'm searching um, but am I okay with not finding books on these topics am I okay with just shutting down right now knowing that I haven't read let's say I haven't finished reading infinite jest for instance I haven't started reading Murakami, Ryu Murakami, not, not Haruki. So with Ryu Murakami's audition, knowing that I've only finished like six pages or so, and it seems pretty promising, but I haven't finished the book either. These things would bother me as a younger person, but now at 25, I feel like I'm okay with not reading these things. I'm okay if I don't write anymore like anyway I only ever want to do it for myself you know it's just a way for me to run away with fantasies I almost don't want to work at being a published writer anymore like I don't think I have anything so I mean I don't have anything of dire importance to say it's still the same themes with me, it's always, it's whatever I mentioned earlier, beauty, labor, suicide, same themes, really. And without realizing it, I, yeah, I've just become, I just started writing everything about the same <laughs> themes. Somehow that just finds its way, all those topics find their way into my stories and whatever I write somehow. I, I don't I don't feel the need to continue waking up every single day just so that I can fill up a notebook with ideas for my next short story or attempt at a novel. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. It's a strange feeling. I've always been quite a passionate person, so it's quite weird to suddenly have that passion fizzle out like that. And then now I don't know what to... How to anchor my world. How to... How to I don't know. That, that used to be... That used to be the center of my universe. Literature at least. Now I don't know anymore. I was actually doing fine. At least I was suppressing a lot of emotions. I'm actually such an emotional person. I just try not to let it show so I keep talking monotonously. Okay, well, to be fair, I don't really have any control over that. That's just kind of how my voice sounds like. But sometimes I think if I, you know, if everybody keeps pointing out that I'm monotonous, then maybe at some point, I mean, they all think I'm like this blank piece of paper, I guess. And, um, you know, at some point I keep thinking if I do keep talking monotonously, I might become just that, you know, monotonous person. Mm. That's all I want, really. I just want to be... I want to be normal and forgettable to the average um, person in my social circle. If I crave recognition and fame, artistic validation, it's probably going to be with people outside of my social circle. But within it, I think I prefer to be seen as boring. <laughs> Less pressure, I suppose. Anyway, that was not the point, but I lost the point. I forgot what was the point. <laughs> How did I even start talking about this? Yeah.
think I'm just gonna end this video while the intro. I'm gonna try to sleep. Maybe, maybe I wanted to say something about being a lousy adult. I can't do, I can't deal with the insurance talk. I can't deal with the banking, the finance, the financial planning. So I'm just not interested. And I am such a horrible adult because sometimes when I go out with friends and they start talking about real life stuff, I, I just can't participate because I don't have any inputs. Not that I don't have the experiences, but just that I don't I haven't converted any of those into conversational inputs. Um, and even, I mean, I could, but also I. I'm not sure I have the energy, so I just listen. But also, half the time, all these topics aren't exactly in interesting to me, and I'm just zoning out. Yeah. I'm sure, like on New Year's Day, we have all our favorite idols might be working as well because they have to entertain us. But also, maybe they didn't film any of those segments live. I'm gonna go to bed, good night.